Hmm. Hello? Yo! Yo, what's up? From, uh, from one uh, car reviewer to another, um, this thing just fries the front tires. So I'm trying to figure out how to figure out drift mode. I've, I've looked up and down, up and down, and I cannot figure it out. It's got a hidden drift mode, does it not? It's hidden, hidden for a reason. So let, let me show you how to get into it. Sick, so sick. Put the car in park. Done. Hold traction all the way off. So like it's through both steps. Traction control stability limited. Disabled. I'm in. Push sport mode. Done. You're putting on the brake. You got it. And then hold both paddles for three seconds and it should go to drift mode. Done. Drift mode activated. But, but drift mode is not like donut mode. So if you like turn the wheel and floor, like it still might not do like like the cool V8 rear wheel drive thing you want. But uh, give it a shot and let me know how it is. Sick. Our first collab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is up, Internet World, and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the 2023 Genesis GV60. <laughs> Here we are today with another SUV. This is the Genesis GV60. Now, if you know anything about Genesis, there is a bigger version of an SUV that's called the GV80, and then a midsize of a GV70. But this is different because this is all electric. Yes, Genesis does not make any hybrids. You either buy a full gasoline vehicle or a full electric vehicle. But this does share a few things, especially with its two brothers and sisters. The Kia EV6 is pretty much exactly the same. And same with the Ionic 5, they're very, very similar. They share pretty much all the same parts. But Genesis wants to be a little bit different because by 2030, they wanna get rid of all their gasoline product. They only wanna have electric. So let's find out today what this thing's all about. There are two different versions you can buy in the GV60. The Advanced, which costs $71,000, that makes 314 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque. And then there's the Performance, that starts at 79,000, that makes 429 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque, but that is before boost mode, that gives you 483 horsepower and a whopping 516 pound-feet of torque to propel this beast to 60 in four seconds. All right, Genesis, GV60. I've got 483 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. 516. But I only get it when I push this boost mode when I'm in sport. So it gives that extra power. And on the cluster, it shows boost. So let's see how this thing launches. So foot down to the brake, foot all the way down, Nothing happens except for the boost timer is counting down from 10. Let's move the brake and see how this thing feels. Ooh, squawked. That's quick. It's so smooth, you don't really feel it. I did this before, about 20 seconds before shooting this, and I did not feel that aggressive when I did the exact same thing. So, results may vary. And then there's the LSD. Yes, the LSD is supposed to keep both wheels spinning at the same time. That is true of the rear, but not of the front. So when I shut off the stability program and I'm around a corner and I pin it, this does what every minivan on the planet does and the front left wheel just squawks. And this is no different. Take a look. So let's say you decide to buy one of these things because you have a 350 kilowatt charging station across the street. And when you plug this thing in, it takes 18 minutes to go from 10% to 80% in the summertime. 
In the winter, it's about 20% longer and you lose about 20% worth of range. So this thing should do about 400 kilometers or 370 or 380, around 240 miles. But the numbers are kind of skewed. It's not really true. It really depends on how much you press this pedal down, how you drive, what height you are, the ups and downs. There's so many variables that manufacturers can put a number out there. But all you gotta know is you have to charge this thing at home. It's gonna be impossible to go to a charging station to plug it in and charge it. And that's something you gotta know and deal with. Look, I love Genesis. I love what they represent. But this thing, hee, like look at the Ionic 5. Look how cool that looks. This is the most expensive of the bunch besides the EV6 GT. But God, why, why, why? Come take a look at this emblem. That is cool, but there must be something else under this clamshell hood that I like. Hmm, some storage. What do we have here? This key is the best key in the car business, hands down. It feels really smooth and expensive. It looks awesome. But the cool part is you don't even need it. Yes, this thing has something called digital key part two. You see, part one is when I take my phone out and I can press a button and then the doors open. And part two is the same thing the Tesla does. I can walk up to it, it automatically knows and it'll unlock when I approach it. But there's one thing that's even cooler and that is facial recognition. I can walk up to this car without a cell phone, without a key, and the car will open because it recognizes my face, even if I grow a big boot. And when I do get inside the car, I still don't need the key because I have a finger. And this finger gets placed here. It recognizes that that's my finger. I press the button and it starts. Oh, it's amazing, a face, a finger, is the future. So along the side here, you can get 12 different exterior colors and three different interior colors. As far as wheels go, these are 21s. They are very, very edgy. You can get them in 20s and 19s. The cool part about it is that in South Korea, you get the coolest virtual mirrors. And what they do is they look out this way. Now, you guys know that when you indicate, it shows you your blind spot on the little screen in the gauge cluster. But what's cool in South Korea, these are totally different and they have LCDs inside that you can see that exact picture, but it also reduces the car's width, it cleans up the aerodynamics, and it's just so modern, and I love it. What I don't love is this little chrome piece that gives you this V shape. Now, it's a signature piece, Genesis says, called a Velo or something, but it kind of looks the same as an EV6. This is an EV6 when I look at it. I don't see that major change that I look at when I see an Ionic 5. That thing is cool, funky. This thing is just bloated and weird looking with these coupe lines and this massive rear sporty spoiler. The back is way better looking than the front because of this big, huge, massive spoiler. And they have this LED strip that flows all the way through it, including this rear camera, nice and tucked away. You'll also notice that, of course, this is Genesis taillights, but they actually squint a little bit and they squeeze down to the middle. And of course, the big Genesis, and it's a nice big flat panel. And everything about it in the back is actually pretty nice and clean. Again, not my favorite color, but you get the vibe. It's pretty decent in the back. Well, there's a ton of room in here, 42 inches wide and about 33 inches deep. And can I fit in here? And the answer is yes, because even though this looks like it's cut hard, that glass being tinted is cool, number one, but it also has an extra step of depth that I didn't expect it to have. Back seat of the GV60. Feel this Napa leather all the way through. Nice to the touch. You see, Genesis is working on a vegan option, so we'll see what that feels like when it comes out. So how do these back seats fold down? Let's try to find a button here. These things do not slide backwards and forwards like the Ionic. There's just some way that I can just fold these seats down to make it easy. Oh, there's a handle right there hidden. And they fold fairly flat. I wish they slid backwards and forwards. They do the recline. And check out this white interior. Flat floor, cool suede headliner. Premium, damn, this is nice. Hmm, 
I also find sometimes with electric vehicles, you can't put your feet underneath very easily. Now my seat in front is just normal height and I'm having a tough time sliding my toes underneath the seat. So anybody that sits lower than me is gonna have a big problem. Lots of ambient lighting, really good quality Bang & Olufsen. You get 17 speakers, standard in this bad boy. Man, really, really good quality. It does have V2L, so that charging thing I showed you guys in the EV6 and the Ionic 5, you can plug it right underneath and you can charge things like a laptop, charge batteries, whatever you'd like, because you can plug something in and then plug an actual adapter to it and charge things, which is super cool. So it works like an outlet at home from a car. This has a really cool moonroof, it's massive. And I like the Tesla, this thing can close. I just push this button and look how it closes. It closes really fast because both of them meet. Not just a one-way deal, they meet together in the middle. Compromising, compromising. What else can I tell you about the back? There are four cup holders in the back of this GV60. Look at the ones in the doors. They're like ultra obvious. The other cool part about it is that it's spacious, it feels spacious. This light interior is really, really nice. It's not ultra white, it's just white enough. I much prefer this than the black. I've seen a bunch of videos, black interior, and people like it, but I think this one is really a hitter. It always excites me to get into something new to see how I feel. And this feels pretty much the same as the Ionic and the EV6. A little bit more Ionic because that had light interior. This one is the same, but it's $20,000 more. It does feel more premium, there's no doubt. There is upgrades like the quality of the images on this screen. There is this cool little shifter that goes away and retracts when I shut the car off. And when I'm having a bad day, I have this crystal ball I can rub and rub and rub for good luck. Because I'm driving a GV60, something premium, something quality, that costs 70 ish thousand dollars the same money almost as the tesla model y that is a little bit longer way easier to charge in today's infrastructure troubles and even the audi q4 e-tron is the same money so it's tough competition but it's got a cool screen and this cool little feature and everything else we've probably gone over in the kia ev6 except for this one thing a fragrance holder. But on this side, it doesn't have a fragrance holder. This is where you adjust the mirrors. So they wanted to keep it ergonomic and match both sides. So that's where they put the fragrance holder. Cool. What else is cool? How about the glove box? Take a look at this. It's like a drawer. It's not one that folds down. This is the first time I've ever seen something that's like a drawer. It makes total, total sense. But I want my sliding console, give it to me. So let's dive into this 12.3 inch screen. Now the home screen is pretty much the same as any Kia Hyundai product out there. It's when I slide over, you'll notice that it's different. You will see that it's got this black white contrast on something that I have not touched yet. In this specific case, I've touched the EV. So you will see when I touch it, it goes into the EV screen. It shows the vehicle, how much battery I have left in percentage and how much distance I can run based on what I'm using in the car. Now, when I change different drive modes, that will adjust, which is a really nice, nice touch. You can also change your EV charge transfer to activate it so that you can plug something in on the side of the car. Now, when I get out of this, you'll see I have obviously a lot more options. The options aren't really any different. It's just how it's laid out is a bit of a change. Now, this doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You still have to plug it in as you see here. Now, when I slide over, it's got something really cool. I really like it because it is called 3D Setup. And what it really is, it's an owner's manual visually. So let's take a look here. When I click see inside, look at this cool graphic. It shows you what you can touch, what you can press, so you can understand it a little bit better. And you can adjust all the different features with it. I think it's a really, really cool feature because what happens is that you get so caught up in going into setup and menus such as this. This is what you're sort of left with. It's pretty straightforward, but it's still sort of too technical. People don't want to go through all that. They want something to, that they can see, they can press, and make it easy for them. Now there's enough settings here to keep you busy for about a month. So I'll just jump in really quickly into something that's really interesting, something called active sound design. Now I can change how loud it is in the car based on the noise that's in the car, but there's different sounds I can get. One is futuristic, the other is G engine, and the other is E motor. And here's how they sound. This is futuristic. 
I'm blasting into outer space. Next is something called G engine. Okay, that organ is gone. That's what this sounds like. Sounds like a car. More car-like. And then there's something called E-motor. Let's see what this thing sounds like. A lot of battery power I'm sucking for these tests. Yeah, that's more electric-like. And if you're hearing all that banging back and forth, you got it. It's the owner's manual in the glove box. Design. So you'll see there's so much data here to go through, but it really just means that it's so customizable and you can change anything you want to adapt your personality. So I found one design flaw, and that design flaw is the glove box. When I was in the studio, I opened it and I thought, this is super cool, it's like a drawer. But the problem with the drawer is it's flat. It's not angled down. And that creates a problem when you want to accelerate and brake. Whatever's in there keeps rolling back and forth, and back and forth, and it drives me crazy. This hands down beats anything out there in terms of futuristic. This also has a drift mode, which is wild to think. But then again, why would somebody buying a Genesis that wants luxury, quiet, well-insulated, good service want a drift mode? Maybe it's just an offering. It's way cooler to offer this awesome little crystal that you can rub really fast. And it's cool that you're gonna have this wireless pad you can drive up on. It's cool that it recognizes your faces when you walk up to the car to jump in with your little finger. That's cool, that's Genesis. Drift mode, eh, a bit sort of corny. But when you first get in, you see these awesome curved screens that are clean. Something that the Ionic doesn't do as well. The Ionic has that trim piece around that just doesn't look that good. The finishes in here are really, really nice. One step up, as I mentioned, to the other two competitors. And then there's the looks. It's sort of an acquired taste, especially in this color. All in all, this is a pretty unique offering to the market because it looks funky and futuristic. The inside is definitely a wow factor. People look at this thing all the time, up and down the street whenever I'm driving. The only concern I would have is that with the GV70 electric coming out, that's more of an SUV, looks like an SUV. The styling of this thing is just an acquired taste, so if that's your style, well then this thing is for you. Again, Genesis always takes care of me when I'm not paying attention. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.